local news. Coming up on Channel 3, noise in the neighborhoods of Burlington. But will stiffer fines curb curbside disturbances in the Queen City? Also, smooth sailing turns rocky for the spirit of Ethan Allen. And let there be light of Vermont football team plays an illuminating game. Channel 3, WCAX, Burlington. This is the Channel 3 News. Good evening, I'm Joan Ritchie. Roger Garrity is off tonight. The Queen City is getting ready to crack down on noise. Burlington Police will be joined by city officials and a college president this evening on street patrol. As Brian Joyce reports, it's all part of a welcome back message to the city's 8,000 student residents. It was all quiet earlier this evening in the densely populated student apartment sections of Burlington. But the police know that on this first Friday night of the new school year, there will be loud parties. So the police will be out in force, joined by the mayor and the president of the University of Vermont to ask for quiet and to write tickets when the partiers just won't listen. The fine's going to range from three to four hundred dollars depending on first or second offense. So it's a pretty hefty fine and it's um, definitely an attention getter. An attention getter aimed at curbing the late night noise that in the past has meant sleepless nights for midtown residents who have to get up and go to work. The police hope the stiffer fines and stepped up enforcement will send a message. Well, the message is, is that this is not just a police issue. Uh, the whole community is involved in this. The whole community is concerned about quality of life. And the whole community is involved with, with going out and uh, taking their part in making their community better. A community that now waits to see if the message about noise will get through loud and clear. Brian Joyce, Channel 3 News in Burlington. The spirit of Ethan Allen hit some unexpected trouble today. The Burlington-based passenger boat ran aground this afternoon near Juniper Island and was stuck on a shoal for four hours. The Vermont State Police and the U.S. Coast Guard responded. Ninety-six people were on board of the 140-foot boat, most of them college freshmen. No one was injured in the incident, and the spirit of Ethan Allen appears to be okay this evening. The Coast Guard will, however, continue to investigate that accident. A hazmat team spent much of the afternoon cleaning up an oil spill in Northfield. As Christian Carlson reports, officials credit quick teamwork for keeping a bad situation from becoming much worse. Hours after the accident, emergency crews worked to contain the 2,000 gallons of leaking oil. Uh, 2,000 gallons is a sizable, sizable spill. The truck was hauling a total of 6,500 gallons of home heating oil to Norwich University. It's a chemical that is not easily ignitable. I mean, it's very lucky that this is diesel instead of gas. If this had been gas, this could have been a real catastrophe because it would have closed everything down. Chances are somebody could have been killed. As a precaution, police shut down Route 12 during the cleanup. Witnesses say the driver was coming down a steep hill when the accident happened. So I called um, for the Norfield Police Department and told them that they had to get up here, that there was a big truck down in the road and that there was gasoline spilling everywhere. Did he get out of it and walk around? Yeah. After the driver was taken to the hospital for treatment of minor injuries, the next focus became stopping the oil from spreading. Workers at a nearby gas station came out to help. They look like molasses. <laughs> all over the ground. It was coming out of the top of the truck. The town, the state brought highway trucks in with sand, and then further downstream we sent personnel to keep it from, from getting any further than it needed to. Crews set up pads and booms to catch the oil, but some did flow from the Sunny Brook into the Dog River. Now, officials from the state will come to assess the damage to the water and wildlife. Uh, any spill into a waterway is, is a severe impact to the environment. Police are still looking into what exactly caused the crash. But witnesses say they have seen many accidents happen at the hill off of the interstate because drivers lose control. They don't notice that how steep it is until they get to the bottom. An accident emergency crews say could have been worse. They credit quick work and teamwork for helping prevent more oil from leaking into the ground. The cooperation is what really makes this thing work well. Kristen Carlson, Channel 3 News, Northfield. Officials say it's time to ground an island pond pilot. Federal prosecutors say John Faustina had lost his pilot's license as the result of several violations, but he kept flying anyway. The feds say that, among other things, Faustina flew over Camp David without permission. The feds say he needs to stop flying until he gets his license back, and they're seeking civil penalties as well. A new bulletin tonight from the FBI. The agency is searching worldwide for four men 
who may be connected with possible terrorist threats against the United States. The bulletin is posted on the FBI website and it's currently being circulated among law enforcement agencies. Officials won't release any specific details about the nature of the threats, but they do say they're seeking information about two Saudis, a Moroccan and a Tunisian. The men have been wanted by the FBI for months, but an anonymous source with the agency says a new intelligent tip led officials to intensify that search. None of the men are believed to be in the U.S. Another round of talks today over what to do with Iraq. Today's discussions focus on the role the United Nations will play and who will hold the power and keep the peace. The U.S. wants more money and troop support from the international community to help American forces already stretch thin. Secretary of State Colin Powell says the U.S. is prepared to negotiate, but countries like France and Germany say they'll only compromise if America gives the U.N. a bigger stake in Iraq's political future. Russia is also considering the U.S.-backed plan, but says it needs serious changes. A fatal accident today in the place billed as the happiest place on earth. One person was killed and several others injured at Disneyland when a ride malfunctioned. A locomotive on the Big Thunder Mountain roller coaster separated from the train behind it. Officials aren't sure whether that caused the accident or if it was the result of it. The fatality occurred in the first car behind the locomotive. The man killed inside the ride has not yet been identified. Weather woes in the south tonight as Fabian and Henri stir up trouble. Fabian is a Category 3 hurricane that has hit Bermuda. And as Elizabeth, Elizabeth Sanchez tells us, Tropical Storm Henri is bringing nothing but wet weather to the Sunshine State. For some people along Florida's Gulf Coast, warnings of Tropical Storm Henri is just another day at the beach. But for others, it means being prepared. Residents near Tampa filled sandbags and stacked them in places where flooding might be a major problem. Forecasters eased those fears when it became apparent that Henri would not cause as much devastation as expected. Certainly not as bad as the devastation caused by another storm in Bermuda. Hurricane Fabian, the most powerful storm to hit Bermuda in 50 years, slammed into the island chain Friday. Residents rushed to protect their property, but Fabian arrived earlier than expected. Packing winds up to 120 miles per hour, the Category 3 storm snapped palm trees and knocked out power to thousands of homes. Phone service was disrupted in some areas, and hospitals relied on generators. Even instruments used to measure the wind were blown away. But Tropical Storm Henri won't be nearly as ornery. So what are your concerns? None. <laughs> and in Florida, no one's complaining about that. Elizabeth Sanchez, CBS News, Clearwater Beach, Florida. Well, we don't have any of that tough weather, fortunately. A few clouds out there today, though. Yeah, not too bad at all. And that's going to be even nicer as we get to the weekend. All the clouds will be clearing out. Lots of sunshine on the way. In the meantime, feeling a little bit like fall out there tonight. There are a couple of clouds. Temperatures falling into the 50s. Already 50 degrees in Saranac Lake, 59 in Burlington, 52 in Montpelier. And across southern Vermont, temperatures also in the upper 50s now, 57 in Bennington and 55 in Springfield. For tonight, we are looking for skies to be clearing out, low temperatures dropping down between 46 and 52 degrees. And a great way to start off the weekend on Saturday. We're expecting skies to be mostly sunny, temperatures warming up about 70 to 76. Now, second half of the weekend looking just as good. We'll have the whole five-day forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, great. We'll look for that, Dan. Still ahead, things are looking bright in Hartford tonight. Whether the Hurricanes win the game or not, we'll see why. But first, the campaign season kicks off early on the Vermont airwaves. Stay tuned for that story. Massachusetts Senator John Kerry aired Vermont's first political ad of the season on Channel 3 today. The Democratic presidential hopeful is presumably targeting New Hampshire voters who head to the primaries in January. It's an early start. Candidates usually begin their Granite State ads around Thanksgiving, but experts say Kerry's in a difficult position in New Hampshire right now, with former Governor Howard Dean beating him in the polls about 20 points. Well, I believe Kerry has two problems in New Hampshire. The first is Dean beat him there in terms of setting up an organization. Dean has more field organizers, more experienced operatives in New Hampshire. Dean has been there more times, so he's, he's lining up the support of key Democratic activists. More importantly, perhaps, Kerry doesn't seem yet to have found his message. Uh, the advertisement we saw early had the word courage, which seems to be the, the theme of his campaign now, but 
courage has to be connected with issues. Davis says Kerry also seems to be having trouble explaining exactly what his position is on Iraq, though he voted in favor of a resolution to use force there. That massive power outage will be on the agenda in Connecticut this weekend. The six New England governors and premiers from five Canadian provinces are meeting to discuss regional issues like the blackout and the environment. Border security will also be a hot topic. Stepped up security and its effect on trade remains a key issue between the U.S. and Canada as both countries try to tighten their borders without tying up truckloads of merchandise. The New York Department of Education says 143 schools statewide need improvement, and two of them are in our region. Officials say Malone High School and the Hoosick Falls High School have deficiencies in eighth grade math. Unless the schools on the list take steps to improve, the state can order to replace the staff, institute new curriculum, extend school days or school years, or even restructure the school altogether. The University of Vermont will lead a nationwide effort to improve public schools. With help from a major gift, UVM is launching a program to help disabled and at-risk students by helping their teachers. Andy Potter explains. Many people might not see the connection between a university like UVM and the public schools, but college is where the teachers, school principals, and superintendents come from. We have to change the way we educate school leaders Today, UVM President Dan Fogel announced a $1 million gift from a UVM alumni couple who wanted to remain anonymous. The money will establish a national think tank of professors from seven universities led by UVM. It will be called the Institute for Leadership, Disability, and Students Placed at Risk. That people who are in the leadership role represent what need to be the voices of sometimes the voiceless children. And that's the 12% of the kids um, that are special ed eligible, the kids who are in poverty, and what is a growing number of kids coming from other countries. The traditional educational training programs for school leaders have been really more of a focus on budgeting and finance and legal issues and curriculum development, all important things. But certainly I have found as a school leader that I am wanting to, to be more knowledgeable and more able to, to work effectively with parents and, and students who come from a variety of different backgrounds. The new Leadership Institute will enhance UVM's national reputation and getting a better handle on kids at risk and with special needs will benefit them and the communities in which they live. Andy Potter, Channel 3 News, at the University of Vermont. And stay with us. Dan's up next with all the weekend weather. And still ahead, Magician Under Glass. Stay tuned to see what this is all about. It's the dawn of a new era at Hartford High School. Lights rising on the football field. Tonight, the Hurricanes play their first nighttime home game in 50 years. Kate Duffy reports it makes for a lot of excitement both on and off the field. Hartford's Hurricanes are breaking into a new era. Lights are illuminating the football field for the first time in 50 years. Kicking off a new tradition of Friday night football. It's a goal almost a year in the making. We watched this team uh, prepare for the state championship game by car headlight. And a lot of folks got together and said it's, it's time we talked about having lights. Volunteers raised $70,000 and donated their time, skills and supplies to get the lights up for the home opener. The boys really enjoy playing under the lights. It's cooler for them. It's just a great community event. In fact, three times as many fans as usual are here cheering on the team. Yeah, there's like 2,000 people here or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah we're excited. Well, I think this is just awesome for the kids. Um, Scott O'Dell played for the Hurricanes back in 1980. He says he hasn't been to many games since then, but drove out from Bethel just to catch the action under the lights. Everybody wanted to be a part of history tonight. It was great today, even at school, because everybody had their jerseys on, and we are just really pumped, so it was cool. And tonight, school spirit shines just as brightly as the lights. Kate Duffy, Channel 3 News, Hartford. Looks like fun. So how did those hurricanes fare on that first night? We'll have the details next. And the Red Sox and Yankees duke it out in the Bronx. Plus, it's week two of the Friday football frenzy. Steve Corsi has all those highlights next in sports.